But first up, the absolute biggest story everyone in the media is talking about. Trouble in the temple. The monk caught shopping at Sexyland. It's a bad back mum. A current affair tonight. I'm sorry, what? A current affair? Even by your normal standards, which is just chasing dodgy tradies or shoplifters down the street, this is low. Now you're just chasing a, a shopper. Half of Australia is in lockdown thanks to a botched vaccine rollout and a botched light lockdown. And you're like, you know who the real enemy is that all of Australia should be focused on? That Buddhist monk who went shopping at Sexyland. What's next? A nun who went to Bunnings? A Pope getting a latte? Lift your game, a current affair. Of course, the real big news story this week was... The sluggish start to Australia's vaccine rollout could have been avoided after shock emails suggested the federal government delayed key meetings with Pfizer. Pfizer invited Health Minister Greg Hunt to discuss its vaccine with senior global executives. The invitation was declined. To be fair, Greg Hunt isn't well known for being very good with technology. The Twitter account of Health Minister Greg Hunt liked a pornographic tweet just after five o'clock this morning. So Health Minister Greg Hunt took his time getting back to a multinational drug company that was offering us gobs of life-saving vaccines. So what? Probably didn't slow things down that much, right? Australia eventually signed a deal in November, four months after Pfizer's first contact. Oh, four months, you know, exactly the same amount of time as Sydney's lockdown is projected to go for. Uh, I think I'll go check my spam folder, make sure I haven't missed any important emails. But don't worry, Scott Morrison assures us that he did everything he could to get more vaccines earlier. The Prime Minister was pressed about what efforts he went to to get more vaccines. Oh, every effort that we could. When asked what efforts were taken... No, I've answered the question. Well, I'm certainly convinced. Good job, everyone, and and happy 12th week of lockdown to you, Prime Minister. Of course, you can trust Scott Morrison on vaccines. He knows the names of all of them. Do we have enough of the Pfizer to go around? Well, it's not just Pfizer. There's there's the AstraZeneca vaccine. There's the Pfizer vaccine. What? You already said Pfizer. It's a bit like saying uh, for dinner we're having vegetables and potatoes. Morrison also can't count percentages. We've gone past the halfway mark. 40% double dosed. F- f- sorry, what? Last time I checked, 40% is not more than half. No wonder these guys are so bad at running the economy. They can't even count. Scott Morrison was also in the news this week for stuffing something else up. Many families across the country were unable to gather for Father's Day this past weekend due to COVID restrictions and border closures. But the Prime Minister got his Father's Day wish after being granted an exemption to travel to Sydney and return to Canberra. No, I'm sorry, that's clearly a lie. Nobody has ever wished to return to Canberra from Sydney. Some news reporters just use the Father's Day story as an excuse to brag about their own Father's Day presents, like Peter Van Onselen from 10 News. The Prime Minister returned here to Kirribilli House just in time for Father's Day on Sunday, a chance to see his daughters, who he hadn't seen for weeks, and perhaps also pick up a Father's Day present from them, like this tie my daughters bought me a couple of years ago. Oh, bloody good on you, mate. You got a tie, did you? For Father's Day. <laughs> Good thing Peter Van Onselen wasn't around to report on the Christmas Day cyclone that flattened Darwin in 1974. He probably would have just used it as an excuse to show off his brand new cufflinks he got. So why was Scott Morrison allowed to leave and then return to Canberra? He was given an exemption to enter lockdown Canberra by the Territory Government because he's an essential worker. Essential worker? No, I'm sorry, that's debatable at best. He's definitely not essential and I've never seen him do any actual work. He just seems to go on holidays all the time. Morrison also wasn't impressed with being criticised for visiting his family. The Prime Minister is defending his decision to travel to Sydney to spend Father's Day with his family, accusing his critics of taking cheap shots. It's a bit of a cheap shot, to be honest. Maybe it was a cheap shot, but I'll tell you what wasn't cheap. The $6,000 it cost to charter the Air Force plane, according to Sky News. Hell, when I was at uni in Canberra, we were lucky to afford the Murray's bus. It was $20. Now that's cheap. Anyways, the Australian public wasn't impressed either. Reunited with his family for Father's Day, the Prime Minister fails the pub test over a trip to Sydney. But what we're talking about here, Rob, is it's failed the pub test, this one, hasn't it? I'm sorry, pub test? There's no pubs anymore. All the pubs are closed. We can't call it a pub test. At best, it's the, like, awkward Friday night Zoom drinks test or the pouring a beer into your keep cup and going for a walk around the neighbourhood all alone test is what I've heard people are doing. 
Scott tried to offer up some empathy. I can understand people's frustration. Yeah, so why did you do it? Clearly he thinks the phrase leading by example only applies to, like, Barnaby Joyce when he's left in charge. And yes, acting Prime Minister Barnaby Joyce is a thing again. We're going to have to get used to it. Scott Morrison's the kind of a guy that if you were lost together in the middle of the desert, he'd drink the last drop of water from the bottle and say, uh, I understand you must be thirsty. Anyways, on to Victorian politics now. Three years after losing in an election landslide, Matthew Guy is back in charge of the Liberal Party. Well, it took less than 10 minutes for the Liberal Party to dump its leader of three years and go back to the man who lost the last election. Yes, and nothing says we're the winning team like backing the loser once more. And Matthew Guy sure sounds ready to lose again. Do you really reckon you can win? Yep, absolutely. Matthew Guy wouldn't say why he was the better person to face up to Daniel Andrews. And you can do the character assessments. All right, then. You seem boring. Yes, no doubt Matthew Guy's election slogan will be, vote for me. I'm different to Dan Andrews. Not sure how, not sure if I'm better, but, you know, I'm physically a different person to Daniel Andrews. Vote one, Matthew Guy. Mr. Guy, yes, that's his name, actually, <laughs> had his reasons for wanting the leadership, though. Matthew Guy says he wouldn't have rolled Michael O'Brien had the COVID crisis not persisted into this year. Sorry, what? Yes, the reason I'm the perfect opposition leader is, uh... COVID. Sorry, no questions. They also announced the new deputy leader. With Matthew Guy elected unopposed, David Southwick voted in as his deputy. Yes, gotta love the Liberal Party. The leadership battles are always between straight white married middle-aged white men. I said white twice because they're very white. They got rid of the most uh, multicultural candidate on offer there as well. Michael O'Brien was at least born in Dublin, Ireland. That's pretty multicultural for the Liberal Party. And also, what is it with these uh, Victorian politician names? Up north, we have Berejiklians and Palaszczuk's, and in supposedly cosmopolitan, multicultural Melbourne, all their politicians are white Anglo-Saxon men with completely interchangeable first names and surnames, like Matthew Guy and Daniel Andrews. At this rate, the next Victorian premier will probably be someone named Craig David or Paul Kelly or James, 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 James. Anyways, from the spill, they uh, went straight to Parliament, which was still sitting, surprisingly. Mr Guy taking his new seat in Parliament. Uh, I'm now becoming, I'm now the leader of the opposition. Yeah, even he couldn't believe he'd, uh, he'd made it there. Meanwhile, all the uh, politicians in New South Wales are like, Parliament is sitting? Parliament doesn't sit in a COVID outbreak. That means government could be held to account. That's not how it's meant to work. Also, me being from New South Wales, I'd uh, amazingly never heard of the big scandal which had previously derailed Guy's political ambitions. And it has the best name for a political scandal that I've ever heard. Nor will it stop questions about Mr Guy's now infamous lobster with a mobster. Yes, I have no idea what a lobster with a mobster is, but uh, from here in New South Wales, it definitely doesn't look like a scandal. Ask, ask any politician in New South Wales... If they've had lobster with a mobster and they'd be like, oh, let me check my diary. Yes, I had three last week. I mean, how is this a scandal? In New South Wales, we have political scandals along the lines of like an MP's secret third mistress sold the Sydney Harbour Tunnel to developers for $1 to be turned into an underground casino. And even then, literally nobody cares. It would be lucky to make page five. Lobster with a mobster. Get some real corruption, Victoria, and get back to me. Now on to lost child news. Three-year-old Anthony AJ Elphalak, missing in bushland in the New South Wales Hunter region since Friday, is tonight back in his parents' arms. Yes, the little child lost in bushland has been found, but it's not all good news. And in developing news tonight, New South Wales Health has advised people who are involved in the search for missing toddler AJ Elphalak to get a COVID test and isolate. Authorities say there were people from LGAs of concern and fears there could also be exposure at a nearby monastery. Exposure at a monastery? Well, to me that sounds like it could be the fault of... The monk caught shopping at Sexyland. It's a bad back month. 